Co-Hunters, we're a bow doctor with Steve Jokes, brought to you by Ed's Archery and Sporting Goods, Clio, Michigan. Okay, right now we're getting ready to put this DXT into the bow press. Um, being that it's a parallel limb, safety precautions, we're going to back the limb bolts out six turns each. That means you're going to back this one off six and this one. Um, a lot of questions, do you need to, can you back them off all at one time? Yes, that's not a big deal. But remember, when you back them off six times, make sure your bow is all the way up. If you already have your bow backed off five turns, you only need to back it off one. And by backing them off, what it does, it loosens up the tension on your strings and cables and helps protect your riser and everything from torquing the bow press. So we're going to back them off right now. And if, like I say, if you keep count, you'll know right where you were before and where you need to go back to. And six. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom one. Okay, we got them off six times. If you look at the where the riser and the limb meet, you can see the gap in here, and that's what we're looking for. And now we're safely uh, ready to put it in the bow press and break her down. Okay, now we do have a bow here with parallel limbs, uh, and we do have a parallel bow press. And the way you can determine that is if you look at it, we have a side jack on the side. What that's going to allow us to do, we've already got your limb gap here set, so we're going to install the arms here. And we're going to make sure we're in the press nice and straight so we don't tweak the riser. At this point, we're going to slowly compress the bow, not hitting the wheels onto the, or onto the arms of the press. So we'll go nice and slow here. And about a half inch, quarter inch away is what you want. And you can see we're nice in there snug, but we have not got the bow press uh, all the way compressed yet, so the bow is not broke down. Now we're going to use the side jack. Watch, we'll slowly crank it down here. And now our tension's off here, and we're able to work on the bow with uh, our hands free and everything loose. Okay, now we've got the string off the bow, and we're going to install the loop. I'm going to use a small cotter key right here. See how we feed that on there like so? Going to feed the loop on through both holes. Now you can see the loop is on the string. We're going to slide it up to the serving. Doesn't matter where we put that at that time or this time. We're going to be adjusting that. Move our cotter key. Now we're going to put the string back on the bottom cam. Here's where you want to make sure everything tracks correctly. And I always put my finger on it and take a good look and make sure all our strings, cables are in the track because that can cause a lot of problems if you take it out of the press and it's not in the track. And we are all set. Now we're going to take it out of this and put it in the bow press and get her going. Okay, we've got the whisker biscuit mounted right now. Now we're getting ready to, to mount the string loop. We've got it out of the bow press and in the bow holder. And we're going to stick the arrow on the string and install it in the rest. Now a lot of people say, why do we have veins at this end of the arrow when they're actually supposed to be at this end of the arrow? We do this because we get a lot of customers like to watch us do our work and it's hard for them to see just a tip sticking out of here and for safety we don't have them lean across and a lot easier to see and they're not hitting their head on the end of the arrow here. Okay, we've got our arrow directly across the hole, that's what we're looking for. Fairly centered here, now we're going to install some levels. And there's the arrow level. And string level. We did already install the peak whiskers, your cat whiskers on here, to save some time. We did crank the bowl all the way back up to its max poundage, so we're good to go there. Okay, right now we're leveling the bowl. That's, that's where you want to start. You don't want to start with the arrow. And now we have the bowl perfectly leveled, and now we're going to level the arrow. And we are perfect. And you can take a look at that and you can see that's where we want to start. Level is as good as you're going to get. 
You still will have to pay for tune the bow, but this is the best starting position you can get. Now I'm going to install a knock on here. This knock is going to do nothing for us other than give us a starting point or point where we're going to put the loop. And we're not going to crimp this down hard. Just going to put it on there so it doesn't slip. We're going to move the arrow. Use a little bit of white out here. And you don't need to put this on real thick. This is just going to tell you where to install the loop. This is kind of our trick of way of doing it a lot easier. Okay, and if you look on there, we got a nice spot. We know where we're going to put the loop. And we'll allow this probably five minutes to dry and uh, take it from there. Okay, we've already got your loop on a string. We've got our white marks here. I've already uh, manipulated it to where I want it, and we're going to slowly set it now. Got a set of knocking uh, pliers that pull loops. Actually, it's a loop pulling plier. And we got our loop started real good. We'll move it in so it's about the size of a knock. And if you look real close, you can still see our white lines right here. Now we're just going to snug her up. Now, we got the loop on, and everybody says, well, we put the loop on, how do we adjust it? We need to paper tune it, you simply turn it, it'll go up the string, turn it the opposite direction, it'll go down the string. So it's totally tunable for when you need to paper tune your bow. And that's how you install a loop.